They say that every problem is an opportunity. For example, when some open-world game designers encounter the problem of players trying to explore parts of their game too early, they take the opportunity to murder them horribly. Some games get creative with it, concocting in-world explanations for why you're being assassinated by psychic snipers for having the temerity to go exploring. Others just stick a bunch of nightmare monsters in your path to crunch you senseless. Here are seven times video games did such things to our horrified dismay. Please enjoy and beware spoilers ahead for the following games. What are you trying to hide, games? Oh, I get it with Dark Souls. Yeah, that's fine, but I mean, that makes sense. But Red Dead Redemption 2, I thought we were friends. What are you worried I'll find? Something cool and secret? I'm a, pi I'm a bold pioneer and you shouldn't try and stop me. Games. Oh wait, it's the end. Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. But too late now. Dark Souls doesn't so much roll out the welcome mat as it does roll up the welcome mat and beat the player over the head with it. After a tutorial in which you fight this guy, who looks like he already ate seven of you for breakfast, you're dumped into the beautiful decaying kingdom of Lordran by a giant crow. On arrival in this sprawling open world, you're given zero indication of which direction to go first, making it as tough a decision as picking which ride to go on first at Disneyland. Only here, every ride is the haunted mansion but somehow that's a bad thing. If Dark Souls could speak after it had said f you buddy, it might suggest you go to the right and up the stairway to the undead parish. But Dark Souls can't speak, and so you, as a trembling noob with neither a map nor a waypoint, are just as likely to head left into the graveyard, which is in both senses of the word a grave error. You see, the graveyard is full of skeletons, which seem designed specifically for noob murder. They reform when they're killed because you don't yet have the advanced weaponry you need to destroy them. And their weapons do additional bleeding damage if you take more than a couple of hits in quick succession. And they can parry your attacks, which basically means instant death. Push past the initial wave of murderous skellies though, and you'll reach an area free of enemies where you can load up on some really brilliant high level loot. Psych, it's actually giant skeletons. The biggest problem with this skeleton kill box though is that because you've heard Dark Souls is a legendarily difficult game, there is a chance you will keep trying to press on in that direction, just assuming that's how difficult the game is. That is unless you give up altogether and try a less stressful hobby like, I don't know, balancing things on top of a sleeping wolf or chainsaw juggling or trying to think of a third stressful thing on the spot because you forgot to finish writing the script. It was hard. I was hungry. Been in the black water, see how things lie. Place is crawling with Pinkertons, bounty hunters, and ah. pictures of Dutch and Hosea. Uh, well, we got a lot of money sitting in that town. And that's where it's gonna remain for now. The map in Red Dead Redemption 2 is bigger and more intricate than the plan Dutch Vanderlind has, which is real and exists. You just can't have a look at it because he spilled coffee on it this morning. What's more impressive is that the map is actually almost twice as big as you think it is, thanks to the inclusion of a huge chunk of the game world from the original Red Dead Redemption, including such fan-favorite locations as Armadillo, Tumbleweed, and Thieves' Landing. However, you can't explore this huge chunk until the game's epilogue, because if you head there during the main game, it's going to be less Red Dead Redemption and more Lead Head Explosion, because you are 100% getting shot. Yes, shot by the hordes of supernatural bounty hunters who warp into existence with the sole aim of wrecking your shit should you even think about trying to get into West Elizabeth before the end of the game. In the fiction of the game, this is because of the ferry heist that the Van der Lind gang pulled off in Blackwater before the game began, which has made them wanted dead or alive across the entire region from the first game. But even that doesn't go far enough towards explaining where all of these Westworld-esque cowboy terminators come from. Wait, are we in Westworld? That would explain a lot, except the ending of Westworld. Because even if you sneak into West Elizabeth in the middle of the night, having changed your hair, wearing clothes you've never worn before, and a full face mask, these superhuman telepathic bounty hunters know exactly who you are, where you are, and a comprehensive list of your most vulnerable weak spots, starting with the head. Get him. 
Someone kill this bastard! You can exploit a glitch to explore West Elizabeth unhassled by the all-seeing authorities, but really, the best course of action is just to stay in the northern part of the map. I mean, no big deal, right? It's lovely up here and the people are so friendly. Why didn't you tell me we had guests coming? I'd have fixed myself up nice. See? So friendly. You're awake. How about that? Whoa, easy there, easy. You've been out cold a couple of days now. Why don't you just relax a second? Get your bearings. At the start of Fallout New Vegas, you get shot in the head and left for dead by Chandler Bing. Just like in that dream I had when I ate a huge cheese plate and fell asleep watching a friend's marathon. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Unlike in that dream, however, you survive and set your sights on revenge and the glittering city of New Vegas, lit up like a Christmas tree in the distance as seen from your starting town of Good Springs. Although you don't also then spend hours being chased through a hedge maze made of television static by all your past geography teachers. It was a really big cheese plate. Still, don't you even think about trying to head straight for the New Vegas Strip. Fallout New Vegas has a lot of tedious tutorialising it wants you to sit through, and it's damn sure going to make you sit through it. Of course, this is an open world game, so you can technically just walk to the strip. The problem is that the direct route there is overrun with what we in the gaming world call double hard monster bastards. Chief among these monster bastards are Death Claws, Fallout's answer to the question, what's more horrible than nuclear winter? And winner of World's Worst Insect 2281, the Cazador. The Cazador, meaning hunter, is based on a real-life creature called the Tarantula Hawk Spider Wasp, with its name derived from the four creatures I'd least like to be trapped in an elevator with. They're fast, unpredictable, hunt in packs, and their sting does more damage than a giant rad scorpion and inflicts three times as much poison damage. TLDR, Cazadors are awful and they have one single goal, stopping you from going off and exploring during the early part of Fallout New Vegas. Once you've leveled up a bit and got some decent weapons, nothing beats the feeling of satisfaction you get from coming back and... Oh, no, still monster bastards. Doing some home improvements, Roma? You're going to build this mansion you tell me about? <laughs> oh, funny guy. We're going to get money. In America, you need money to do anything. You're taking me to a backroom game where I'll win all the dollars we need to really see this town. Grand Theft Auto 4 doesn't have an especially auspicious start. You've got no money, or your clothing options are terrible, and you're living in a pee-pee-soaked heck hole with Cousin Roman, the empirically worst character in video game history. Cousin, it is your cousin. You want to shoot some bull? So you'd be forgiven for wanting to go and explore, particularly the island of Algonquin, based on the real-world Manhattan that you can see across the river, shining like a, well, like a cool city full of fast cars, fancy clothes, and exciting sights to see. Also not Roman. <laughs> no, I'm a fat prick, what did I do? Yes, thank you. The only problem is that Algonquin is an island, and the bridges are, at the start of the game, closed by the police due to a terrorist threat. Where were those guys when I did this? Of course, you might be thinking, this is Grand Theft Auto, since when do we listen to the cops? I'm just going to drive right on over there and do a sick flip over their dumb faces. To which I say, good luck. Hope you saved recently. That's because attempting to cross into Algonquin saddles you with an immediate six-star wanted level, the highest it's possible to get in the game. This means you are immediately catapulted to the top of the America's Most Wanted list, with cop cars, helicopters, and SWAT teams in armoured vehicles all out to take you down for trying to poke your nose into a more interesting part of the map before you're supposed to do so. Added to this are concrete barriers across the bridge itself, making it incredibly difficult to just ram your way through without this happening. Maybe you're thinking, hey, I'll be sneaky and swim my way across under the cover of darkness, to which I say, good plan, I give it six stars. Don't be 
Sadly, the only way to explore Algonquin properly is to wait until the right moment in the story to do so, which means a lot of taxi missions, a lot of cheap tracksuits, and yes, a lot of Roman. I can only wish. See you later, cousin. That's it, I'm trying the bridge again. One of the cool new features in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was that you could complete the game in any order you wanted. That and the cooking. <laughs> Who's hungry? But while you technically can head straight to the final boss almost immediately after starting the game, you absolutely shouldn't. Because seriously, what's wrong with you? Have you seen Calamity Ganon? Okay, well you have now, so knock it off. The recommended way of doing things has you travel around the game world, defeating the four divine beasts, which are huge mechanical animals that are home to various incarnations of Ganon. Once these divine beasts are defeated, they aim a powerful laser at Hyrule Castle, Ganon's hideout. With all four divine lasers in place, the final boss battle begins with Ganon having half his health drained, making the encounter a much fairer fight. Also, by this point, you'll have increased the number of heart containers you have, upped your stamina, and gotten hold of gear a little more impressive than a pointy stick and some baked apples. What else am I supposed to use? Harsh language? This is Link we're talking about. He's mute. If you're determined to go up against Ganon from the get-go, however, then you have definitely earned that Triforce of Courage because you're gonna have a bad time. Even getting to Ganon will be a struggle, as Hyrule Castle is swarming with laser-firing guardians and other tough enemies, and we re-emphasize, you only have three heart containers and a pointy stick. <laughs> That's not to say it's impossible. Some speedrunners have managed to finish Breath of the Wild in under an hour, which is kind of missing the point. Think of all that cooking you've just missed out on. Honestly, I'm kind of furious just thinking about it. World of Warcraft is all about a huge, persistent, online, explorable fantasy world where you can eventually go anywhere, except out of your house because you're hooked on World of Warcraft. Now, in World of Warcraft, Felwood is a forested zone on the eastern continent of Kalimdor. It's very green there, but not a lush, verdant green like Elwyn Forest, more of a sickly, luminous green like Radioactive Waste or Kermit with a Hangover. What's more, it's full of evil, corrupted trees and angry, diseased bears. <laughs> and yet, Felwood is immediately adjacent to scenic, comparatively low-level area Ashenvale, which lies to the south. Felwood is so conveniently connected by road that noob sightseers from Ashenvale might easily be tempted to hike along a trail that leads right into this nightmare woodland and death. <laughs> if you go into the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. Today's the day the plague bears have their picnic, which is a you sandwich. Boy, that's the kind of thing that could really put you off playing World of Warcraft. Game developers with open world games are fond of saying things like, you see that mountain over there? You can climb that. But apply that invitation to climbing the tallest mountain in Skyrim too early in the game, and you might just crash and burn harder than a rocket-powered Segway soaked in overproof rum. That mountain is called the Throat of the World, and on its forbidding slopes is High Hrothgar, home to an ancient order of monks known as the Greybeards. Guess what they have on their faces? Sky Garjo. You need to visit these reclusive Gandalf cosplayers for important story reasons later on, but woe betide you, the low-level dragonborn who tries to pay them a premature visit. Keep an eye out for wolves if you're headed up the path to High Hrothgar. You'll find the foot of the mountain guarded by dangerous wildlife who don't want you trampling all over their mountain, but do want to suck the marrow out of your leg bones. Should you make it past those hungry critters, get ready for a close encounter with a frost troll, which is a kind of terrifying three-eyed mountain bouncer made of angry muscle. 
Yeah, this guy is a sign you're not supposed to be here yet. Thanks for watching this video about the times that games try to block you from going to other places, but we're not about that. We're about enabling you to go to other places on the internet, such as other YouTube videos, like this one up here, which is from us, and it's about horror bathrooms in serious need of CSI. Uh, so yeah, enjoy that. Sounds tempting, doesn't it? And down here is one from Outside Extra, which is about minions that were almost too cute to kill. I say almost. We did kill them.